hello and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play part 27 and a half. Now you might be wondering why 27 and a half? Why not 28? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First is that it's been a long time since my last video and I want to do a bit of a recap on what's happened since then. Two is I was actually planning on doing a 27 and a half episode before, you know, two months ago before I started playing Star Wars Old Republic and um which you'll know I've been playing if you look the last two videos I posted, but um, because what I had done is I'd finally finished my gatehouse and gotten just the way I wanted it, and I was going to show that in part twenty-seven and a half because it's really, really, really complicated, and I didn't want to fill up a whole episode of just talking about redstone wiring, so I figured I'd do a little side episode with that, and then I'd go on with twenty-eight, which is going to be exploring. I'm going to explore the rest of this map and then I'm going to go through my nether tunnel to my other base and explore that map. So lots of map exploring. I'm looking forward to that. So obviously this is an access door. The real door is right there. But um, if I have this access way, and of course I'll fill this with obsidian and then I'll put doors down and it'll be all nice and secure. Um, Redstone wiring, extremely complex. It took me a long time, both to get all the redstone and all the other stuff. And I repeatedly would get almost done and then have to go hunting for more redstone. And if you look really closely at this section of my wall in like 27 and 26, parts 26 and 27, you can see like there's a lever and stuff because I was working on it off camera because I wanted to give it all off camera and then show it when it was done. So so it's done now and I'm happy with it so I'm going to show it. But before I get to that, when I run down here and show what I did with my farm, I expanded this a bit and I expanded this. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with all these reeds but whatever. Same goes for the cacti. Great. I've got lots of cacti. And then over here, I'll eventually make this grass, and hopefully I'll be able to spawn pigs, sheep, cows, and chickens in here without any aggressive mobs. So that'll be interesting to see how that works. You can see I've got the cabling up for the room above that there. And then I still, this is still the same, although I really need to go down and chop the trees down. And up here, I don't know if I showed this or not, but I'm going to fill this chest full of rubber because then I'll have lots of rubber and that hasn't changed much, this hasn't changed much just right, and then I still have that stuff up there this is all still the same and well, the only difference with this stuff is that there's more of it, like this chest full of dirt and I really need to fill this take all this stuff and stick it in the recycler and recycle it all. But anyway, I'm also in this part going to work on my mob grinder, automate that a bit. Alright, but this. So the bottom row of three are two buttons and a lever. And the top row is the indicator lights. So this here tells me this light will be on if the traps are open. And this and so, because what happens is, the, uh, the way it's supposed to work is this switch opens and closes the doors, and that switch will open and close the doors. And they work just fine, just like this. Now, the way that works is because I've wired these two levers to a XOR gate, which stands for either OR, where Either this can be on or that can be on. But if they're both on, then it won't work. And if they're both off, it won't work. In other words, you have two inputs, one output. The two inputs have to not be the same. If they're both the same, then the output will be off. But if the two inputs are not the same, then the output will be on. And in this case, the output being on means the pistons are extended, which means the door is shut. So I want them to be the same, and that will open the door. And I will link the 
Minecraft wiki page for redstone wiring, in case you're interested. So that's how they work, and that's how it's been for a long, long time. But then I got the idea, well, I'd like it so I can have a lever in here, so I pull the lever, and then the outside lever will no longer open the door, but it will trap the person who pulls the lever. So, this switch. I flip the switch, and the light goes on to tell me that the traps are now armed. So now, if I come over here, and say I'm coming down here, and this of course would be sealed, and like, oh, okay, lever, all right, well, what this lever do? Pull the lever, and yeah, like that. And that goes all the way down to bedrock. And it's double thick like that, you'll notice there are two rows of stone for the thick, and the lower one down there, you can just barely see as it goes, because it goes by really fast. That's because I really wanted to block out the light. So that when you're down there and it's shut, there is no light. Also, the stairs retract. See, the bottom one retracts and the top one extends. What that does is... The farthest you can stand away from the lever is second stair. And I need to fix this whole lot. I forgot I had done that. Alright, there you go. Just wrong button. There you go. Okay. Farthest you can stand is about here. And I'm not going to do it because I don't want to fall down to my doom. But if you stand about here and pull the lever, see, then it will push you off and you will fall all the way down to bedrock. Like that. So it's good. It's really good. And you also notice this. This is really simple. It tells me that it only activates once, because obviously once it's been activated once, the light will stay on. But triggering the outer switch and having the traps open and close like that lights this light up, and I know that the in traps were triggered. So that can push this button, and it resets the light. So light goes back out again. Now this it is to fix a bug because there's one little problem with the system. It's not a bug, but I mean it's just an error with the system. If you do this, see, the traps stay open, which is not really what I want because who's going to jump down into the traps? So now I can come over and say, aha, traps are open. And then I push this button. and it resets it so the traps are now closed and then I can push this button to reset the alarm and then I push this button to disarm the traps again so it works because what this button does this lever I should say this lever if you hear those pistons what it does is there are two pistons back off that direction that one extends and the other retracts based on whether the lever here is on or off and either connects one circuit and closes the other or closes that circuit and connects the other one. So that alters what this switch over here does. So now I'm going to actually walk through this area. So let's start with the reset switch. The reset switch is this middle one right here. It goes here, turns, goes that way, and then comes down here, and then it sneaks underneath, you might recognize this area here, it sneaks underneath this area, comes down over here. I'll get to that in a second. Comes over this way, over here, goes up this way, I'll get to that in a second, does not touch that other circuit, comes down here, triggers this piston. If this piston, see, this block is enabling this circuit. This circuit will tie back into the redstone torch that indicates whether the circuit needs to be reset or not. If it needs to be reset, then this will get pushed over, because every, every time the, the trap activates, this circuit powers up, triggering this piston. 
and there's just a simple little torch over there. So when I want to reset it, I push the switch, push the middle button, it pushes this over, closes the circuit, torch goes back out again because of the, all the inverters. Now, if we come over here, this is the reset right here. If the traps get stuck open, I push the reset button, which is connected to this wire, and it extends this piston, and then automatically retracts it again, which breaks this circuit here enough for it to reset itself. Now, this circuit here is is a pulse sustainer, which is a device that extends a pulse to the desired length. And so what it does is it takes the input, which is right here, I believe. Yeah, okay. It takes the input, which is right here, and extends this circuit, this piston here. It um this is not a sticky piston. It just extends it and then blocks this over here for a little bit and this redstone torch then provides power here. Goes through this area, comes over here, goes over here, activates this this piston, pushing the block back, cutting off power. And then it goes up there and does that stuff. And I'll get to that in a second. First though, note this this is actually a simple monostable circuit. What this does is it takes this wire here because what it does is it takes for example a lever. A lever gives an always on or always off. There's no pulse with that. So I want so this circuit here with this piston makes a lever act like a button. And this wire, if I trace it here, ignore this for a second, I'll get to that in a second, comes, goes this way, turns, sneaks up here, and I can't get up there because it's a block in my way, and I know for a fact there's a redstone on top of it, but it goes up, connects to the outside lever. Now, going back this way, you'll notice that the lever also, you know, but this, this is the trap activation thing, whether it goes to the traps or whether it goes to the doors. Right now it's in door configuration. So if the outside lever is triggered, that stops the pulse there. Instead it comes over here and triggers this. And you'll notice that the monostable circuit is only connected if it, it triggers the traps. So this is off and always off if the lever is off or always on if the lever is on. And so then I can flip the other switch and the other switch triggers which of these pistons is on. Whether it's this piston or this piston. This piston means it will open the doors. This piston means the outside lever will open the traps. And if I chase this wire it goes down here and then it sneaks its way underneath the floor and eventually ends up back at the uh, lever panel. So the monostable circuit creates a tiny short little pulse. The pulse lengthener lengthens the pulse then it comes over here and it goes this way sneaks underneath this area which I'll get to, so I'll get to that in a second. What this does right here, this is the actual alarm. When it goes by, it triggers that, causing much like the other indicator, same principle. So that's how that works. You've got your redstone torch, and then unless I talked about that already, I don't know. Anyway, point is so the output of the pulse generator. Pulse, sorry, pulse sustainer, pulse sustainer or lengthener comes this way. It comes over here, winds its way around, works its way over here, and then goes up there. You'll notice also it splits off and goes that way. 
That way we'll take it to the indicator that the traps are armed. Or sorry, not armed, on. Traps are open. So this wire then continues this way. Over here it turns off this torch, because it's this torch that keeps all the tor all the um traps open. Or not open, closed. That wire is a different wire. It goes from the outside lever. It goes down that way and triggers everything the outside lever triggers. But this way it comes this wire comes over here to the traps and then this one wire will split and cover all the traps. It goes up and then over to trigger all the top pistons. It comes down to trigger all the bottom pistons. And then it goes over there to trigger the stairs, and it comes over here to trigger the stairs, which I'll show these because these are easier to get to. The bottom stair is always extended, and the top stair is always retracted as far as the pistons are concerned. And then they reverse based on power. So as you can see, power, it is powered. As soon as this becomes unpowered because of the torch up there, then that will retract, but this will become powered, and then this will extend. The net effect being to extend the top piston, retract the bottom piston while retracting the floor, you'll fall into the pit. Okay, I believe that I managed to talk about everything. So, if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. I'll link, like I said before, I, don't, I think I said this, I'll link over to the Minecraft Wiki, the page on redstone wiring. Ultimately, what it comes down to is I used three circuits. I used a monostable circuit to create a pulse, to turn a lever into a pulse, rather than just a on, off. I used a pulse sustainer to create, make, take that pulse and make it a little bit longer so that you have time to fall through the floor when it opens. And then, this is all just for the traps. I have a little reset, that's a very, very simple little thing. And then I have the XOR gate, which is actually this way. <laughs> which is also relatively simple in and on its own. It um got the torches and then it just works. It takes this is the this is output one, this is output two. Um this is the out oh, sorry, in I meant inputs. This is the input from the outside lever. This is the input from the inside lever. And then they both go into this contraption and then it comes out here. As you can see, the outside lever is off, the inside lever is on, and as a result, the output is on, and like I mentioned earlier, when the output is on, the doors are shut. So it's those three circuits, and then everything else is just the tricky wiring I had to go th through to make it work. Um, this is simply, you know, reverses which one is on. This was self-designed, though there wasn't much design, I just put down a couple of pistons and it worked, great. And then the two indicators are just along the simple principle of um, the blocks that c blocks being able to continue a circuit. Here hasn't changed very much, this is under directly underneath the gatehouse. These three redstone torches are where the three doors will be. Um, and then obviously the bottom pistons on both sides, and then the top pistons on both sides were seen earlier. This hasn't really changed. I only, I think I had to rewire it a couple times because, um, room got really, really tight. As you can see, I've got, I had to dig down to get that. And so it was ch a challenge, and not to mention the redstone cost. And by the way, this was all done completely legitimately. I mined all this redstone. And remember that the redstone torches all take a redstone and a stick, but then the repeaters all take two redstone sticks, and, or two redstone torches, I should say, and a redstone. So that's three redstone per repeater, one redstone for everything else. So that's a lot of redstone. And to top it off, I still have 
two and a half stacks, or actually it's more than a half a stack, but two stacks, four torch, uh, four repeaters and a torch, so it's a lot. Very expensive, but it was a lot of fun to build. So, now that I've shown how it works, I'm going to seal this up, and we'll be done. So, first thing I'm going to do is put these three obsidian pillars down, because I want the doors to be opening um, yeah, you take reinforced stone and you make reinforced doors that way. Like that. Anyway, I want the doors to open, I think, on the inside, like this. I believe this will work. Didn't work. Yeah, these doors are really finicky. Hold on. Right, so I figured out what I was doing wrong. I forgot that doors have to be placed from the outside. So this door placed just fine, but this door I technically placed it from the inside, which is why it didn't work. But if I place it from like that, and this one like that, now when I come over here, pull the lever, they all open just fine. So now that that's done, now I can fill the rest of this in with obsidian, and my gatehouse will be finally completely done. So I'm quite happy. It's a, been a long project, but it's been fun, you know? It's been fun. That's sort of the whole thing of Minecraft. You know, really big, long projects that are really fun to do, so... I'm not sure what the point of having a torch in the corner there is, but... Oh, well. I cannot see. <laughs> I mean, I know that's the point, but still. Okay, so this looks good. And then this looks good. That. That's the torch. Let's see here. This. 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 dark tunnel, come out here. And you pop the lever, go through the dark tunnel, come out here. Very nice. I like that. Okay. So now that that's done, yeah. I'm gonna run down and work on this. Because what I'd like to do is have two levers here. One to turn the lights on and off, and one to turn the water on and off. So I'd like to be able to control this from here without having to go up these stairs and come around here, or climb this ladder. Here, see. I have to, to right now I have to bust all these torches, take down the, this. Well, really all I have to do is take down this and these torches, and then the water will flow out, take out those torches. But then they'd be spawning and shooting at me, so I'm gonna have light drop. I'm actually not gonna have light drop in from the ceiling or anything. I'm just gonna have there'll be blocks here, and then they'll ex they'll retract into the wall, so it'll be looking like this, and then there'll be glowstone in the ceiling. And then this is very simple. Just have these blocks attached to pistons, so I push the button, and then they go down one block. It'll be all they need. And then it will work great. 
Because right now I have it deactivated because I don't need any more feathers or bones or arrows. So that is the next project. And I will work on that in just a second. I have to go up here and get my supplies. I'm probably not going to record it because it's kind of boring. So I think I'm just going to jump cut and then I'll be cool. Be right back. Okay, so that's done. I now have these two levers and they're wired to redstone back here. I use the redstone repeaters so I have them next to each other. This one controls the lights, which, let's see, lights are, I've got some torches in there so I can, for demonstration purposes, uh, yeah, this is lights off, so I'll go up and show what this looks like here. Actually, lights on, okay. <laughs> so, these blocks extend, blocking the light. These blocks drop down allowing the wire to flow through, which will take out the torches, which is nice and convenient. So, as you can see the pistons there. Come down here. So, lights off, lights on, and then water on. And it takes a second for the water to change states because it has to flow through, but as you can see the lights are on. And I can flip the light, the water off, and it just takes a second and the water goes away. So that's really convenient. Then I've got lights on, or off, ugh, lights off. So things are spawning, but then of course there's no water. Turn the lights back on, you can clearly see. Flip the water lever. Yeah, I forget, discovered this is actually kind of cool. Get let them get over into the pit, and then release the water. Oh, one skeleton got away. But the idea is so now they're down there, trapped. Turn the water back on again, and it drowns them quicker because then they're already down there. And like that guy, he has to struggle for a bit and then drop them down. But it works. And it's cool because now I can stand over here behind my nice safe glass wall and it's fully automated. Well not fully automated, but I can remotely control it. So So it's cool. Not that I need any more bones or arrows or feathers or whatnot, but that's cool, all the same. Alright. I also plunked down my other two spawners. Obviously, they're deactivated at the moment. Plain and simple, dark room, spider spawn. Let's me kill them, and then they can't get any closer, so I can kill them in, with impunity. I have to manually kill them, but it lets me get string, and once I upgrade to 1.0, I'll be able to get the uh, experience from them, because these monsters, when they die over here in the drown trap, won't drop experience, is what I've heard. Um, I haven't tested this, because I haven't done any... I've done very little stuff on 1.8 and nothing on 1.9 and above. So, we'll be interested to see how that works. And... So, yeah. Next up, exploring the rest of this map and then going up to my nether base and building a map there and exploring that map. And, uh... So, yeah. That will be the bulk of parts 28 and probably 29, so I'll see you then.